Hello and welcome back to Father Clayton. Um, how do you explain that? That is the title of the series that I want to do um, maybe once a week. How do you explain that is basically um, a scientific approach to certain things in the universe that are unexplainable. We have a, a gist or somewhat of a small grasp, not a full one, uh, understanding of certain things in, in the universe. Um, those things fascinate my imagination, really push it to the, the envelope and personally help me um, discover new thoughts, discover new theories about certain things, how things come about. And so, um, yeah, so I want to talk about the moon. Most people don't realize um, that the moon is just really, really a rare thing we have. It's really too big to even be this close to us. Um, None of the other moons in the solar system, Saturn and Jupiter's moons, there are many, like almost 100 plus, um, and any other planets, none of them come close to the size and the closeness of our moon. And, and that includes any other solar system. We haven't found a, a planet in a solar system with a similar moon um, yet. So, um, yeah, and it's right next to us. Like... It is extremely unique and rare. Um, you know, hundreds, uh, hundreds uh, of years of astrology, we haven't found anything close. Um, we've never found a moon that also has a perfect orbit. Like the axis, the YZ X axis of this celestial orb, the satellite, is perfect. It does not move an inch. With all the other planets and moons and in their solar system going around the sun, you know, 50, whatever, 40,000, 50,000 miles an hour, um, the moon isn't budging at all. It never moves or budges. It's got a zero spin. Zero spin. Normally, if there's anything even remotely close, maybe 1% spin, maybe point, uh 09.08 percent spin you know it's like 99.5 percent or even 99.9 percent .9 no spin but it still has a tiny tiny spin like newton's laws however the moon formed with the earth in the early years five billion years in the solar system it's not budged and nobody can explain that I'm always fascinated that the fact that the moon always is the same. No matter where you are on the planet, the moon looks the same. So I had a girlfriend in Germany for a couple of years. Uh, I thought we were going to get married. And I would just tell her that I love you to the moon and back. Because at night or during the day, during certain times of the year, we could both look at the moon at the same time. And we it was a way we could connect. This was before smartphones. This is, only, this is when you had long distance, cost five, ten dollars a phone call to Germany, but we'd always look at the moon together. So I was always fascinated by that. Nowhere in the universe do we have a celestial object orbiting a planet with perfect zero error axis, no spin, no rotation. <laughs> and it's, yeah. Um, a lot of people point to the fact that, you know, it also has a perfect size between the sun and the third planet from the sun, which is Earth. We have this moon that, you know, are very tiny compared to the sun, but during eclipses, it's perfect. An absolute, a perfect uh, diameter, size, it's 400 to 1 ratio, um, and it completely blocks out perfectly, not too much, not too little, the sun from the earth, and so if it's any bigger or smaller, um, the, there wouldn't be an eclipse. You know, there would be, it wouldn't be seen as we see. It is an eclipse. It's, if it, 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 otherwise it'd be a block. The moon is in front of the sun and it's, you know, let's say it's 201. That means 50% of the light would be blocked, give or take. And we would probably barely recognize it. It would, you couldn't even still stare at the sun. So it would just go around the moon. It, it would just disappear, just like other planets. You know, they, they pass through the sun and they're very, they, they're not perfectly um, sized to give it a perfect eclipse. 
but our moon is. How do you explain that? Um, any bigger, it would block out the sun completely, and it wouldn't be a, an eclipse, it would be a blackout. So we don't have blackouts, and we don't have, you know, the opposite, where the sun is, you know, shining over the moon, and we don't see the moon at all eclipsing or passing through perfectly. But we do have a 400 to 1 ratio with zero spin moon to the sun. So the only way, the only case that we have is, is an actual eclipsing. Hence, we call it an eclipse. The eclipsing has to be perfect. So how do you explain two perfect, rare, extra, extra rare things with our moon? I always like to tell kids, how do you explain that? I don't give them the answer, though. Um, I love to tease my kids. Um, also, the geography or moonography with the, you know, the far side of the moon is very unique to the near side of the moon. So the side we see is near side. The opposite end, with the dark side of the moon, is far. Um, the crust is extremely different on the far side. It's older and thicker. Um, has much less impacts on the far side that people don't, don't realize that. You think it has more, but it actually um, doesn't. So, um, how do you explain that? You'd think it'd be opposite, that there would be impacts, more impacts on the far side of the moon than the near, but there are more impacts on the near side of the moon. How do you explain those near misses? <laughs> uh, some scientists, NASA scientists, whoever, you know, uh, have even, you know, su suggested that it would make more sense that the near side would be on the far side and the far side would be on the near side, considering uh, the, de the geography of the moon. Moonography, whatever you call it. Satellite, celestialography. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the, the entire moon structure and orbit and size. Uh, none of it makes sense. Those are three... Those are three points of science that cannot be explained. People see the moon every day and they don't even know these that these are three unique things about the moon. It's perfect orbit, it's perfect size to the sun, uh, between the moon and the, the, the earth and the sun for eclipsing, and the fact that it's the near and far side is, is, um, is what it is. Um, so there is a lot of mystery there. Um, yeah, you would think that some force would nudge it in our in our solar system. You would think that the near side is makes more sense that it's on the far side. How do you explain its size? How do you explain where it came from? There's no spin. Some argue it would make more sense if the moon wasn't there. That one struck me when I heard that from a scientist. Um, it wasn't Neil deGrasse, but it was someone similar. It was like the guy from Britain. Really nice guy. Oh, what's his name? He's a, I love listening to him. There's a British guy from Oxford. He's a, a physicist. He call, he talks really funny. Well, not funny, but he's, he talks like a nerd. Like, he could have been an Isaac Newton kind of guy. Um, so I'll tip my tongue. But he did a lot of videos. I watched a lot of those videos. Like DVDs back in the day. So HD Blue, Blu-ray stuff. So, yeah. Um, some argue it makes more sense that the moon wouldn't be there. Um, to me, I think God had something to do with it. The tides, how the tides work and the ocean works is entirely dependent on the moon. How animals react, behaviors associated with um, the moon cycle. As a hunter and a fisherman, it's, you watch those moon cycles and the activity is always, not all, not all the time, but most of the time there is more action. I go hunting with the high peaks of moon phases um, and so forth. Uh, I end with that. I'm going to continue doing these videos. How do you explain that? Um, to get people to think. Um, it's a way for me to enjoy uh, the challenge and the, 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 the um, well, just the quest for knowledge. I'm always learning. Every day I read, every single day I read different subjects that I enjoy, from history to science, geopolitics, politics, uh, philosophy, you know, theology, demonology you know as an exorcist you got to read up on angelology and that stuff um but yeah so i hope you enjoy this video and when you see the moon ask yourself how did it get there how does it not have a spin at all 
how is it the perfect size, and how do you explain its makeup? God bless.